Here I'm asked to multiply two binomials and I have a factor of five out in front for which I'm just going to copy the five knowing that when I multiply out these two binomials I'm going to get four terms which I'll put in parentheses because after I write out the four terms I know each term will need to be multiplied by five. So ignoring the five for a moment let's multiply out these two binomials. We have 2x times 3x gives us 6x squared then 2x times 2 is 4x, then negative 4 times 3x is minus 12x, and I'll need to move this parenthesis over a bit, and finally the last multiplication would be the negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8, and we write that as subtract 8. Because I want to, I'm going to wait one more step before multiplying that 5 through all of the terms. I notice that I have two like terms in the center here, and I'm just going to combine them. 4x subtract 12x gives me negative 8x, which I'll write as minus 8x, and I'll copy the subtract 8 here. That is called combining like terms. They both have an x to the first, so they can be combined. Now it's time to multiply that 5 through these three terms. 5 times 6x squared is 30x squared. 5 times negative 8x would be negative 40x. And finally, you can think of this as 5 being multiplied by a negative 8, and that's negative 40, but I will write subtract 40. Because none of my terms are like terms, I cannot simplify any further. This term has an x squared, this term has an x to the first, and this term has no x at all. So those are not like terms, so I'm done with the problem. Let's work out a similar problem now. This one is going to look a lot like the last one, except there's a common mistake in this problem the students want to square the x and square the negative 5 and leave it at that. It turns out if this operator inside the parentheses was multiplication, that would be just fine. But because this is a subtract, or if it were a plus, you actually need to multiply it out like we did in the last problem. Think of x minus 5 squared as being x minus 5 is being multiplied by x minus 5, because that's what an exponent means to do. It tells you how many times to multiply the base by itself. Since there's a 2 here, I make two factors of the x minus 5. Don't forget to copy the plus 9. Like in the last problem, I'm going to copy the 2 and leave a lot of room to multiply out these two binomials here. When I'm done, I'll combine like terms like before and then multiply everything by 2. And again, don't forget to add 9 on the outside here. So here goes, x times x is x squared x times negative 5 would be negative 5x. I'll write that as subtract 5x. And then you get another one here because you get another negative 5 times x. So you'll have another subtract 5x. And then finally, negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. And again, only because I choose to do so, I'm going to combine those middle terms before I distribute the 2. So doing that would be a negative 5x and a negative 5x is a negative 10x. I'll write that as subtract 10x. Copy the 25 and the parentheses and the plus 9. Now it's time to distribute the 2 to the three terms inside the parentheses. 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times negative 10x would be subtract 20x. 2 times 25 is 50. And then we still have that plus 9 that we haven't forgotten about from the beginning. Now, unlike the last problem, I have a little more simplification I can do because this is a constant and this is a constant, right? There's no variable x associated with this term. So since those are two constants, they're like terms and I can combine them. So my final answer would be the 2x squared, subtract 20x, and then 50 plus 9, of course, is just 59. So that would be my final answer because I cannot simplify further. We have an x squared term, x to the first term, and a term with no x at all, for which we call a constant term. Let's try a couple more. Here we'll get lots of practice squaring a binomial because we have two of them. And because there's a subtract here, you have to be really careful with your parentheses in this problem. But I'm going to start writing this out just like I did the last problems arguing that an exponent of 2 just means I need two factors of x plus 3. I will copy the subtract symbol, and then I'll make two copies of the factor x minus 1. 
So now it's time to simply multiply out these two binomials and I'll multiply out these two binomials. So we have x times x is x squared. x times three is three x. But you're gonna get another three x when you do this multiplication here. And then finally three times three is nine. So now having seen a few examples, you may have noticed a pattern that the middle two terms are always like terms and you can combine them in the next step. This is the part here that I warned you about needing parentheses. It's tempting just to copy the subtract symbol and move on to multiplying out these two binomials, which is basically what you do. Although having the subtract symbol here is much like having the two in this problem that you need parentheses so that you remember that after the multiplication of the two binomials takes place, the two actually needs to be distributed to every one of the three terms. So if I don't put parentheses here, that wouldn't happen and I'd get the problem wrong. So I know that I need to put a parenthesis here. In fact, you can think of this as we're gonna eventually distribute a negative one to every term that comes out after multiplying these two binomials much like we distributed the two in the previous problem and much like we distributed the five in the first problem. So put that left parenthesis and continue to multiply. X times X is X squared. I know that we often refer to this as foiling, but I also like to think of it as you're just distributing twice. If this minus one wasn't here, you would know to distribute the X to both terms. X times X gave us X squared x times negative one is negative one x. You can think of it as subtract one x. I don't write the one. And then this term here gets distributed to both. Again, if this x wasn't here, you'd know to distribute the negative one to both terms. So I think a foiling is just using the distributed property twice, and it's helpful when the problem is more convoluted. Anyway, negative one times x gives us another copy of negative one x. I'm not writing the one, so it just looks like subtract one x. And as promised, the middle terms are like terms again, for which we will combine in a minute. Uh, last one, negative one times negative one is positive one, so we write that as add one. And I'm gonna cap off that left parenthesis here with a right parenthesis to remind myself that that negative out there needs to be multiplied by everything that came out of this multiplication of these two binomial factors. So I'm going to combine these two like terms, copy the x squared, three x plus three x is six x, copy the nine. Remember that multiplication comes before subtraction. I cannot take the nine and subtract one and say that that's eight. So it must do the multiplication first. So actually I'm gonna wait one more step to do that because like I did before, I like to combine like terms inside the parentheses first. You don't have to do that. You could reverse these two steps. It would work out just fine. So I'm just going to copy everything and the only change I'm making over here is that negative one and negative one makes negative two. So I'm gonna write this as subtract two X and then copying the plus one. Now, nothing going on over here, just copying. This is where I do what I promised. I'm gonna distribute the negative one times all three terms here, which came out of the multiplication of these two binomial factors. And doing so, I get negative one times X squared is minus one X squared. I don't write the one. And a negative times a negative is a positive, so this multiplication is gonna give me a plus two x. And then finally, negative one times positive one gives you a negative one. And I just have a lot of like terms to combine now. So I have this x squared and this subtract one x squared, and one minus one is zero. So x squared minus x squared is zero, and we don't usually write adding zero in mathematics. Multiplication by zero would be much different, but adding zero, does not change anything in a problem. So we don't need to write it. Uh, then we have the six X and the two X that gives me eight X. And then finally we have the constant nine and the constant minus one and nine minus one is positive eight. So I have eight X plus eight. I'm going to leave it like that. Moving on to the last example, this one's just going to take a lot of multiplication because now we have a three as an exponent Remember the exponent just tells me to take the base, which is X minus two. And because it's a three, it means I need to make three instances of the factor X minus two. So what I'm going to do here is you can choose to either multiply these two binomials out, copy that and wait to the end, that works. But 
I'm going to choose to copy the x minus 2 here, and then I'm going to multiply these two binomials out as if this x minus 2 didn't exist. You can ignore what's happening over here. Pretend for a moment that what's being underlined here is the only problem we're working on, and just ignore this. I know that when I multiply two binomials, I get four things. The middle two terms always combine because they're like terms, so let's see how that plays out. I'm going to put a left parenthesis and start multiplying this all out here. Uh, x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 would be subtract 2x. And then as usual, you'll get another one of those when you do this. Negative 2 times x is what I just said, negative 2 times x. And then finally, when you do the negative 2 times the negative 2, a negative times a negative is a positive, so we get plus 4 there. So I put a left parenthesis at the beginning, right parenthesis at the very end, because this x and this minus 2 will be distributed to everything. And in a minute, you'll see why I tend not to call multiplication of two binomials foiling, because foiling only works when you have binomials. That word doesn't work any other place. Uh, but before I do that, like I always do, I point out that uh, the middle terms are like terms as usual. So I'm copying everything in the previous line except for when you have a negative 2 and another negative 2. Uh, you can think of that as negative 2 is being added to negative 2, or you can literally think of it as negative 2 subtract 2. It means the same thing. Either way, you get negative 4x. So I write that as subtract 4x, and then just copying the 4 and the parentheses here. So here's where the word foiling breaks down. The word foil works great when you have four multiplications, but we're going to have six. And there's no reason to give it a name. The idea is if you could temporarily pretend that that negative 2 wasn't there, if this problem was just the x, you would be saying that we're going to distribute, which means multiply the x to everything in the parentheses. If it were just the negative 2 right there, you would know to distribute the negative 2 to the three things in the parentheses. So you're just going to be distributing twice. And I don't feel the need to come up with a fun acronym like FOIL, which, by the way, I do use FOIL when I teach. I just know that it's very limited to a special case. So back to the real problem here, I'm going to distribute twice. So first, I'm going to ignore the subtract 2 here and pretend there was just an x, and I'll distribute it to these three terms. x times x squared would be x to the third, because you add exponents. This is an exponent of 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Multiplying the x to the next term, I get minus 4, and again, adding exponents, 1 and an exponent of 1 add together to give 2, so I get x squared. And then finally, x times 4 is the same thing as 4 times x, so I'm going to write that as 4x. So done distributing the x, it got multiplied by three things, producing three things. Now I do the reverse, I pretend the x isn't there, and pretend there was just a minus 2 here, it gets distributed to three things. So negative 2 times x squared would be just that, negative 2 times x squared. Uh, a negative times a negative is a positive, so if we do this, we're going to get a positive 8x. I write that as adding 8x. And then my last multiplication finally is a negative 2 times positive 4, which gives you a negative 8, and we write it as subtract 8. Now there's going to be a lot of like terms here to combine. The x cubed is not one of them. This is the only x cubed in the entire answer here, so I'm just going to leave that x cubed. However, we do have a minus 4x squared and a minus 2x squared. Those are both x squared terms, so I combine them, and a negative 4 and a negative 2 make a negative 6x squared. And then we have these like terms, because they both have x to the first. A 4x plus an 8x gives you 12x. And then the minus 8 is much like the x cubed in that it is alone. It is the only constant in the problem. So I would take and just copy the subtract 8. So I'm going to say that is my final answer because I cannot combine any uh, like terms. So I'm quite happy with my result. Anyway, that was a lot of multiplication. I hope you learned something from it. And I wish you the best of luck.